Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are going to have a look at how we can change the fuel that is being burned in your Ricardo Wave engine model. So in front of you is an inline four cylinder compression ignition engine. And you can find this engine under the tutorial files in the Ricardo Wave folders in your program files folder. Now I'm going to use this as an example because it's a nicely set up engine already. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and change our fuel and we're going to use for the diesel engine, we're going to use some renewable fuel of biodiesel. So to change the fuel that is being used in the computation, we need to go ahead over to the session tree and under model properties, you will see at the top there's fluid properties and you can see that your fuel is being specified here as diesel. Ricardo Wave as standard comes with a bunch of different fuel files that you can use. So you don't need to create your own, you can just use theirs. And if we go to the tag, which is currently set to diesel and we expand the drop down menu, you will see there's a bunch of options such as diesel, butane, ethanol, hydrogen, E85 for the flexi fuel engines, methane, methanol, natural gas, and a bunch of others as well. If on the other hand, you have your own fuel file and you want to use that rather than one of the predetermined fuel files that Ricardo Wave is providing, you can just change the specified by option from tag to fuel file and you get to option to specify the file path to your fuel file. So I have already created fuel files B10 and B80, which just indicates that there's an 80% of biodiesel in the fuel mixture or a 10% biodiesel in the fuel mixture. So for this example, I'm going to choose B80 and we have now switched from diesel to a fuel mixture containing 80% of biodiesel. Now for this example, we are going to compare the performance of this inline four cylinder diesel engine running on petroleum diesel, as well as running on a fuel with 80% biodiesel content. And we are going to look at the emissions generated by burning these two fuels. So we need to activate the emission submodels of Ricardo Wave. Now, the first thing we need to do is while we're at the model properties and we head on over to this option to activate the passive scalers window, we activate it. And then you can see there's an option of, of inputting names and molecular weight for the different passive scalars. Now we are interested in simulating NOx emissions and CO emissions. So we need the NO and CO passive scalars to enable us to simulate the emissions. So we are going to create an NO and a CO passive scalar. And the molecular weight for NO is 30.08 and for CO it is 28. Once that is done, you can click on any of your cylinders. I'm just gonna click on my cylinder at the top, head on over to the sub models tab. And then in the secondary models, you can see there's DI emissions, direct injection emissions. We're gonna press the green plus button to create a submodel. Now to edit it, we press on the little pencil button and then you will see there are three options for emission models that you can choose from. I'm going to activate all three of them. I'm gonna keep my multipliers as is and then I'm just going to select for the NOx emissions model, I'm going to select NO and for the CO emissions model, I'm going to select CO. Once you've done that, your model is now ready to run a simulation using B80 and it will be calculating the emissions generated by combusting biodiesel. Now I've gone and run the model and I've saved the results for when the engine is running on pure diesel as well as when it is running on a fuel blend containing 80% of biodiesel. And I've generated a few graphs just to show you the effect of alternating the fuels for these simulations. First off, we look at the brake torque versus engine speed. And you can see for the B80 case, which is in blue, the engine has a reduced maximum torque output because it is running on a fuel blend that's got the majority of biodiesel content. That is as expected because biodiesel's lower calorific value is less than diesel's lower calorific value. So the energy content in biodiesel is reduced compared to diesel. And as such, you would expect that the generated torque of the engine is decreased when you are running on a majority biodiesel fuel blend. The next graph shows the brake specific fuel consumption versus engine speed. And again, you can see that 
for the engine running on B80, the fuel consumption is increased compared to when the engine is running on petroleum diesel only. And again, that is because of the lower calorific value in biodiesel being less than that of petroleum diesel. So you need a lot more fuel to generate the required power or torque. That being said, with biodiesel resulting in an increase of fuel consumption and a decrease of torque and power output, it has an improved brake thermal efficiency compared to running it with just diesel. So your engine efficiency actually increases when you run it on biodiesel compared to just petroleum diesel. And this can be as a result of the increased oxygen content in biodiesel, which improves combustion and as such increases the thermal efficiency of your engine. Now let's have a look at the emissions generated for these two cases. This graph shows the NOx emissions in parts per million versus brake mean effective pressure. And you can see for values of brake mean effective pressure between four and six, when the engine runs on petroleum diesel, it generates a bit more NOx emissions than, than when the engine is running on biodiesel. Now you might think that academic literature actually says that NOx emissions increase when you run on biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel. And now it's showing the opposite. Now that is something that you need to go back to and make sure that your combustion methodology in your model is actually set up correctly. If we look at the CO emissions, also in parts per million versus brake mean effective pressure, you can see again for brake mean effective pressures of six and higher, running on biodiesel has a benefit to CO emissions compared to just running on petroleum diesel. And this comes back to the fact that, there, that biodiesel has an oxygen content contained in the fuel, which promotes complete combustion. And as such, the majority of the CO is converted to CO2. And lastly, if we have a look at hydrocarbons generated from the combustion, you can see similarly to the previous emission graphs for brake mean effective pressures of six and higher, the hydrocarbon emissions is reduced when running on biodiesel compared to running it on petroleum diesel for the same reason being that the added oxygen content in biodiesel promotes complete combustion and promotes burning of the hydrocarbons so that it doesn't end up in the exhaust. And that is how you go about simulating an engine running on any fuel, be that petroleum diesel, biodiesel, and if you're simulating a spark ignition engine running on E85 or similar fuel blends. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below. I'm unavailable on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. If, we, if you want to ask your questions on there, you're more than welcome to do so. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.